So in this video we're going to go over how to test for odd symmetry. And like before, before we test for odd symmetry, let's get an idea for what odd symmetry is. So all odd symmetry is, is if you can establish a point, a single point on an object, and then identify that the object is a reflection of itself in that point, then you have odd symmetry. So for example, if I take this blade and I reflect it through this point, it would reflect over to the blade on the other side. And similarly, similarly for each of the other blades, they reflect over this point to themselves. The other thing that you can uh, look for is 180 degree rotational symmetry. So if you have an object where you can rotate it about a point, 180 degrees, and have the shape look the same as it did before you rotated it, then you have something that has odd symmetry. So for example, this propeller, if we reflect it through the center, this, this point up here would reflect through down to the other side of the blade, and each of these blades could be reflected through this point, and they'd land on the corresponding point on the other side, or we could rotate it by 180 degrees and the blades would match up. So this, this is, has odd symmetry, and this is an example of a plant with odd symmetry, clearly a rotation by 180 of those leaves will get things to match back up. So in, in function world, we're interested in reflecting through a specific point, the origin or the point zero zero. So if we look at a function and we establish that if we reflect points through the origin, that they land on corresponding points on the graph, then we have odd symmetry. Or we can think about what would happen if we rotated this graph 180 degrees about this point. Well, this bowl here would land inside of this bowl. The, the graph would match up. You wouldn't be able to tell that you had done anything to the graph if you rotated it by 180 degrees. So it has 180 degree rotational symmetry or reflective symmetry through the origin. And what you want to notice in a graph like this that has symmetry with respect to the origin is that if you plug in, for example, f of 1, we see that the output is 2. If we plug in the opposite of 1, which is similar to what we did when we were thinking about even symmetry, but here when we plug in the opposite of one we see that we get negative two instead of positive two. So what this shows us is that f of negative one gives us the opposite result that f of one did. So similarly we could look at uh, two and negative two. When we look at the negative two, if we input negative two into the function, the output is a positive two. When we input positive 2 into the function, the output is negative 2. So again, this shows us that f of negative 2 gives us the opposite of what we get when we plug in positive 2. And we get the same thing if we plugged in this negative 1.73 here. Um, we get the, in, in fact, it's kind of a, it's an interesting case in the sense that when you, you the output is 0, but it's still going to be true that when we input uh, 1.73, we get the same output, but 0 and the opposite of 0 happen to be the same number. So we still wind up getting that plugging in the negative 1.73 gives us the opposite of what we get when we plug in positive 1.73. It's kind of an interesting case because here the output is 0 and plus or minus zero just equals zero. So you generalize this, you say, hey, anytime you plug in the opposite of x, you're going to get the opposite of what you get when you plug in x. And this gives us the definition for an odd function or a function that has odd symmetry with respect to the origin. So if you test for odd symmetry using the definition, that's what this is what you do. You need to show that when you plug in the opposite of x, you get the opposite of what you would have gotten if you had just plugged in x. So we do this test similar to how we did it for even symmetry. You start with the left-hand side and you say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the opposite of x.
and I'm going to simplify it and see if after I'm done simplifying I can then factor out a negative to get the opposite of f of x. So plug in negative x everywhere you see an x. So we have x cubed minus 4 times x. And now we run our, we do the replacement, right? This is function notation, so this is just saying anywhere you see an x in, in f of x, replace it with the thing inside the parentheses, in this case negative x, or opposite of x, I should say. So we plug in the opposite of x. And we want to recognize that this is really just negative 1 times x being cubed minus 4 times this right here is really just negative 1 times x. So this is really just negative 1 cubed times x cubed minus we have a 4 times a negative 1 times an x. And if we cube a negative 1, that's just going to be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. And because we have an odd exponent, we're going to get a pair, which is going to give a positive 1, but there's going to be a leftover, negative 1, that negates everything. So we wind up getting negative 1 x cubed minus 4 times negative 1. We have a double negation here, so this is going to be plus 4x. And negative 1, we could really just write opposite of x cubed if we wanted to. And the idea here is if we were testing for even symmetry, we've gone and we've simplified as much as we can. If we were testing for even symmetry, this is where we would stop and say, hey, is this the same thing that I started with? And it's clearly not, so we know that we don't have even symmetry. So what we need to do is go the extra step and factor a negation out of all of the terms. So we factor out a negation. And once we've factored the negation out, we look at the stuff inside the parentheses and we say, hey, is this the same as what I started with? And it is. So that tells us that the stuff inside the parentheses is just f of x, so we can make that substitution. And now we've shown that if we plug in the opposite of x into the function, it can be manipulated into the form opposite of f of x. So we can uh, make our conclusion based on the definition of odd functions or odd symmetry. We can say because f of the opposite of x equals the opposite of f of x, f of x is an odd function. Odd in the sense that it has symmetry with respect to the origin, not odd in the sense that it's strange.